let's get the starter Moneyballs project running. So first of all, download the zip and you can find the link to that in the description for this video. Uh, extract this zip and uh, within this folder, you should have two folders for the start code and the finish code. So just grab the start folder and you can rename it if you like to just Quasar Moneyballs. Drag it into VS Code, open up the terminal and run npm install to install the dependencies. Uh, once that's done, just run Quasar dev. And we can now see the front end for this app Moneyballs running in the browser. Help me out with a quick like, comment, share, or subscribe. So let's just remind ourselves what this app does. So Moneyballs is a money management app, which allows us to add income and expense entries and keep track of the balance. So we can add an income entry by entering a name here at the bottom and entering an amount and hitting enter or clicking on the plus icon. And we can see that entry appear on the page and we can see the current balance down at the bottom. And we can add an expense entry by entering a name and a negative number. You can see our income entries are in green and our expense entries are in red. And if we look at the balance, you can now see this rent entry has been deducted from the balance. We can also edit an entry by clicking in the name field and entering a new name. We can edit the amount by doing the same thing. We can reorder our entries by clicking on sort, dragging on these handles. We can mark an entry as paid by swiping right and we see the styles change on the entry. We can also see the balance of all the paid entries down at the bottom and we can swipe left on an entry and then click on delete in this dialog to delete an entry. And the app currently has two pages, this entries page, and also this settings page with a bunch of different settings. Although these settings are not too relevant to this course, but we can disable the prompt to delete. We can show a running balance of all of our entries displayed underneath each entry. We can change the currency symbol and we can change the appearance to dark mode and see a completely different color scheme. But for now, I'm just going to set all of these options to the defaults and jump back to our entries page. So we're using a Pinia store to manage all of our entries data and all of the methods related to adding, updating and deleting entries. And this Pinia store is where we're going to be doing most of our work in this course. So let's just take a look at that file. I'm going to jump to the Explorer and go to source and stores and store entries.js. So all of the entries for our app are stored in this entries ref array here. And this is hooked up to the entries page to display all of the entries. And this entries array is just an array of objects with one object for each entry. And each entry has a unique ID, a name property, which is the name of the entry that you see on the left an amount property, which is the amount that you see on the right, and a paid property to handle whether an entry is paid or not paid. And if I scroll down a bit, we currently have this watcher here, which is watching this entries ref for any changes, whether an entry was added, edited, or deleted. And whenever there is a change, we fire this save entries action. And if I jump down to that, this save entries action is currently saving the entries array into local storage into an item called entries. And when the app first starts, this load entries action is triggered, which retrieves that entries array from local storage and then assigns that array to the entries array ref in our state thus displaying the saved entries on the page. However, in this course, we're going to be removing all of this local storage functionality and instead saving all of the entries into a database instead. And I'll just briefly cover everything else, which is in this Pinia store. So we have this options reactive object here, which just has this sort property. And this sort property is toggled when we click on this sort button here. Uh, when this sort property is true, we can see these handles, which we can use to reorder our entries. And we also have some getters. So this balance getter is what is displaying this balance down at the bottom here. 
and it's basically just using the reduce method to add up all of the amounts in the entries array and calculate the balance and this balance paid getter is displaying the paid balance down at the bottom basically doing the same thing but only adding up the amounts of entries which are marked as paid then we have this running balances getter which is what is displaying the running balances if we enable this show running balance option on the settings page and i'll just add another entry here so you can see what this is doing so this is basically just a running balance of the entries as we go along so in the beginning with this first entry the running balance is the same as the value of that entry well then we add this income entry which adds 2424 so this will then get added to the running balance so that we can see exactly what our balance is at this point and this running balances getter is basically just generating an array of all of these running balances so that we can display them on the entries and I'll jump down to the actions. So this add entry action is fired when we fill in this form at the bottom with a name and amount and click on add. And it's basically just creating a new entry object based on that form data, adding a unique ID property and a paid property and pushing it to the array of entries. Then we have this delete entry action, which is triggered when we delete an entry. Uh, we pass along the entry id and it deletes the entry with that id in our entries array then we have the update entry action which is fired anytime we make some kind of update such as editing the name or swiping to mark an entry as paid and this action is basically just applying the updates that we made to the required entry in the entries array based on the entry id then we have this sort end action which is fired whenever we finish reordering our entries and let go. And this is basically just removing the entry that we moved from its old position in the entries array and then adding it back in at the new position so that our entries array is in the correct order. And we've already covered the save entries and load entries actions. And after that, we just have a couple of helpers, one which allows us to get the index of an entry based on its ID and one method which allows us to fix a bug which sometimes happens when we delete an entry and that's explained here. Get the full course including authentication, role level security and policies, database functions and triggers, storage, edge functions and running Superbase locally from makeappsacademy.com or click the link in the description.